Hey, welcome back to the Hub Channel. My name is Brandon, and this is the new high probability short term live trading with Mike Wade from Michael Wade Trade Coaching. In today's show, obviously, we're going to be talking about the FOMC meeting, what uh, Mr. Powell said, and how that's going to affect the markets going forward. I cannot wait to hear Mike's thoughts there. We're going to be doing a quick market review on that. Last show, we had a couple of trades that we put on. So we're going to go ahead and go over those trades as well as talk about Mike's Sniper Guidebook Giveaway, another live trade that we have for you guys here today. And then, of course, if you guys have any charts or symbols you want Mike to look at towards the end of the show here, go ahead and put those in the chat right now. But, Mike, get on in here. If you don't know Mike already, he is the founder of Michael Wade Trade Coaching. He knows his stuff, and I love his trading style. So pay attention to what he does throughout the show today, and you're going to pick up on that. Mike? Obviously, we're going to talk about the markets. Obviously, we've got to talk about what happened yesterday. What are your thoughts? How you been, by the way? Bye. I've been doing good, man. I live in Costa okay. Rica. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's that's here. <laughs> okay. So market decimated yesterday a little bit. I mean, it started to take a turn for the worse. We haven't seen that in a while. What? Why did that happen? I mean, what did he say that just made everybody so mad that they weren't expecting already? That's what frustrates me. It's like, you knew he was going to say what he was going to say. It's like you have to wait for it to trickle out of his little mouth before it starts to happen. <sighs> so, yeah, so exactly. You know, uh, I, first off, I wouldn't want to have the Fed job. Would you, Brandon? I mean, my, oh God. my gosh. He can't Talk win. About the most hated job in all the world. <laughs> well, yeah, second, I, maybe, I, maybe third most, but yeah. Maybe the third most, yeah. But he's up there. That job is up there. And I, you know, I often watch the, well, I'm not, I don't often watch it, but I, yesterday I watched the, the uh, press conference. Oh my God. Watching that is just like nails on a chalkboard for me. There's, and the point, and I don't want to diminish the job. It's a hard job. They're looking at a lot of data. And so what, here's a chart of the spies. I, I can kind of like talk to it a bit from the charts. So, you know, it, we, we've had high inflation, which is coming down, which is good news. Inflation's down by two points. We've got to get it down to 2% or the Fed does. It's currently at around 3.4%. So the Fed wants to bring inflation down to 2% and things are moving in the right direction, but the economy is growing at a pretty good clip and the jobs market is still hot. And so if he cuts rates too soon, then that could spur on in, uh, inflation rising again. So that's this, uh, he's got his foot on the gas and his foot on the brake at the same time. You know, Brandon, when I first learned how to drive, that's how my dad taught me to drive. It's like, he's, he's trying to figure this out. And for some reason, people were expecting him to say, well, maybe we're gonna cut rates in March. That wasn't gonna happen. I'm surprised too, Brandon. He said, no, we're not gonna cut rates in March. We're gonna, it's the same story. We gotta wait and be careful. and be guarded and cautious. And the markets said, man, I don't like that. And they crashed. Well, I mean, it didn't, that was a, I wouldn't call that a crash, but there was a solid correction after he revealed <laughs> what we already knew. You know, um, Brandon, my mother's British and the, in England, they have a saying called uh, the baby spit the dummy. The you know, a dummy is like a pacifier. So they, the baby spits the dummy when it gets upset and the markets spit the dummy and came down pretty hard on some high volume. And so now the question is, of course, where do we go from here? Now we could get a bit more of a correction. I look at support levels 480, 470 on the spies. This is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500 course. So I think we might come down to 480, find some support. But Brandon, it's, everything's still the same. So, why, why, so I'm not expecting a big correction. Uh, from this this point, maybe some solid profit taking. That there, by, by the way, Brandon, right under my pointer there, all time high territory on the spies happened yesterday. No, sorry, the day before. What's today? Wednesday? Thursday? Tuesday? I don't know. <laughs> the day before the Fed yeah. announcement. What day is it? <laughs> days all blend. I mean, I think it's I think it's Thursday now. But yeah, a couple days ago, I think it hit all time highs. And with that sell-off uh, yesterday, we're looking at 480 definitely on the table. Just looking at your chart there, we could sneak down even a little bit lower, maybe 475, 470, but that would be a lot. But that would give yeah. us another leg up because just like you said, nothing's changed fundamentally in the market. We're still just like we were. 
But I also am of the of the I guess of the opinion that we might have needed this little pullback. So this might have been welcome pullback. And I think it yeah. might give us more legs to even go just a little bit higher once we start to bounce again. What's that red line yeah. there? What moving average is that red line there? Well, that's the 50 day average, which 50 corresponds day? Okay. To, you know, I talk about let's talk about lines in the yep. sand just a little bit because this is this is a big part of the system. And you know, I've just drawn a line at 470. And 470, of course, it's not quite 470, 470, but anyway, 470 is a round number, 480 is a round number, right here, 460 round number. And what you'll see is there's commonly at those round numbers, there's bounces that happen right there. The, uh, above my cross was a bounce right off 470. So it, it'll, it'll find support at 480. If that's breached, then I would expect 470. And then if it breaches 490, then that would be a signal that we might be on to newer height, higher heights. So we're, we're, we'll have to wait and see. The futures, Brandon, just to let everybody know, you can go to CNBC and get the futures, and they're flat. So the Dow's down 0.06%. S&P's up 0.29%. NASDAQ, which got hammered yesterday, is up 0.49%. So the markets are kind of like uh, digesting the move, and we're going to have to wait and see which way they go from here. Yeah, this will be interesting to watch over the next couple of weeks to see how this thing plays out. So now that we're looking at this and now that we've kind of seen this stuff, how did that affect you put on a, a trade last week here on the channel? How did that affect yeah. that? How did that trade play out? Walk us through that and what your thoughts are on how the results were. Yeah, this was a this is this was a sniper as good yeah. as they get. And um, you know what happened because I I call I, I do know what happened. <laughs> you you're pretty excited. This was a good one though, but th and th I think we gotta definitely emphasize how fast the profit was made on this one too. And so yeah. go ahead and hit this up. This is good. Yeah, let me tee, let me tee it up a bit just to remind everybody what we were up to here. But this day here, uh, right when my crosses, Humana came out and said our earnings are going to be terrible. In the next week and the stock tanked and then here they announced earnings and guess what they were terrible and then the stock gapped down again and so what we did here <laughs> was <laughs> same thing that happened to the fed exactly hey our earnings are going to be terrible i don't know we don't believe you so it turns out yeah. the earnings were terrible oh, okay yeah. we believe you now <laughs> it's like... and kaboom it, it got taken behind the woodshed and beaten twice and then it tanked all the way to 350 and what we did was we sold one of these credit spreads and I put this order in and we sold the 390 calls and the 390 and we bought the 39250 calls. This is a credit spread. It's a slightly advanced, it's not a super advanced option strategy, but it's, it's more complicated than just buying calls and buying puts. I do have a guide that we'll talk about that's free. You can learn about credit spreads in the guide. But basically, Brandon, we drew a line in the sand at 390 and it didn't fill right away and then just after the show closed on thursday the stock made a run up and we got filled on this thing right around 10 eastern for 70 cents this was in a, a thinkorswim simulated account 70 cents and then an hour later the stock came back down and we were able to pull this one off and netted 35 percent in one hour that's not bad not bad that's extremely so one hour if you were to ever annualize that if you were able to do that every hour can you can you imagine those numbers anyway but yeah one hour that's not <laughs> typical obviously but it was really yeah. good but it was a really good setup and the thing was you played it off of information in the market that you already knew was out there and coming and it was like 90 percent of the trade was made for you and all you did was just execute it you know in a way that was really good on our show last week so i think I think it was really cool how that thing played out. I think it was awesome. Yeah, exactly. And you know, Brandon, I, I want to emphasize a point here. Now, this wasn't, the, the, I, I just followed the, the rules of this system. So, you know, I've been trading for 25 years or so, maybe it's 26, a long time. And when I first started, I wasn't using rules and systems. And then when I embraced rules and systems that tell you exactly when to enter, and exactly, most importantly, when to exit, that's what this is. And so, you know, every Thursday we come in and we, 
we refresh these rules with live trades. And if you can embrace the system and practice, you'll find that over time, typically you'll be around 90% winners and the average gain around 10% with a whole time of an average of eight days, seven or eight days. You know, Brandon, if you annualize that, that's, um, that's a really nice return. So that's the system. It was generated with a system. Not all of them are 35% winners. This is an exceptional one. You know, we, we usually average at around 10%. So that was a really good one, Brandon. And then we had one was, other that, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, ahead, yeah, yeah. I mean, and 10% ain't bad either. I mean, 10%, if you average 10% with 90% win rate, I mean, you know, something to talk about for sure. The other trade was yeah, L, what was it, LUV? Was that the other trade that you put on there? Uh, uh, Southwest Airlines, yeah. Yes, um, okay. And, and but, you know, just to, to emphasize the uh, 10%, it's not a lot, right? But every every seven days, it sure is a lot. You could take the same money, trade it three times, and if you manage to get 10% on average each time, that is a 30% return in a month. All right, now that that's like just stacking up. If you take the same money, take the, do three trades with the same money, and you make 10% on each, then you've literally generated 30% on the same money. So it, it, uh, many traders hear 10% and they go, ah, not worth it. Yes, it is if you're in and out in every uh, seven or eight days. So. Now, th this one, Brandon, remember I was saying to you, I said, well, uh, so, uh, this was a student trade and I liked it. Southwest came out with really good earnings. And, and when we were looking at it, it was dancing with 3250, which over here was support. Support, support, support became resistance right there, the red bar. And then it hit 3250, a, a, a round number, a resistance level. I call them lines in the sand, same thing, but they work at round numbers very well. And I said, I don't know, I'm a little worried that that might hold. And so what we did is we sold a credit spread right down here at 29.50 below this blue line, which is the 200 day average and below 29, which are 30, excuse me, 30, which was also support. And we, so we got a little bit beneath. And so what happened after we got filled on this is the stock said, eh, taking a break, comes down. Let's zoom in on this because I want you all to see this. This is the power of these lines in the sand. And I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about them because it's the, it's the, uh, uh, the foundational technical, te technical technique. What am I trying to say, Brandon? It's important. <laughs> so look here. It comes down, bounces off the 200. Again, bounces off the 200, dip below the 200, bounces off of 29.50. Uh, here, bounces off the 200. Yesterday, bounces off 29.50. And we do nothing. We don't, we're not gonna do anything on this trade unless we can buy it back for 10% of our original credit, netting 90% of our max profit, or if the stock closes below this line in the sand and it doesn't want to so far, then that trade will ultimately be a winner. We've got about a week left. Here's the current status of the trade in a risk graph. Uh, I use tools. This is a, a tool, a really great tool to help me to visualize trades in what's called a risk graph. And so I've got my eye on this and you know it gets a little hot. We're down a little bit of money on this one right now. We're down 17%, but I do nothing. Even though my emotions might kick in and say, oh my God, what if the stock drops? I, I might lose more money. Forget that. Rules. If the stock closes less than the short strike here, which is $29.50, then I'll pull it off for whatever I've got to buy it back for. And I'll take a, you know, maybe a $75 loss or so, depending on how long it takes. We have nine more days, and this trade will be a winner, provided the stock stays above $29.50. And that looks like that's what's going to happen. Well, that's, that's the opening bell there, Mike. I want to get to your next trade right here, right now, because I know you're anxious to get that put on for us. But I'm glad that you showed us that. That love trade, along with your other trade, shows us that you are human a little bit, but you're just following the rules as well, and you're yeah. going to let those play out, which I think is super important. So what trade yes, do you have yes. for us today? Let's get right to that now, because the market is open. Align Technologies. They make Invisalign. I've used the product. 
And uh, the stock came out and blew out earnings and lifted their future guidance. That, this is textbook classic. It's even better because now the, the stock just opened up above 300, which is now a support level. We have the 200 day average, which is also a very strong support level. It hasn't been above 200, the 200 day average in a long time. The last time it was above the 200 was back here in September. So that is, um, that is a good, this is so perfect, I can't even say it loud enough that we have the 200 day average now as our um, protection. So I'm looking at selling, coming in, and I'm going to be conservative because I want to stay as far back away and maybe make about 10% on this. So I'm looking at 275, and I might lift it depending upon what credit is actually available. So what I'm going to do here is sell a credit spread, right, or try to sell a credit spread right at 275, and then I'll sell the put at 275, and then I'll buy the underlying put. All right, so let's just go right into a simulated environment. This is Thinkorswim simulated environment. I'm not gonna take this trade myself and I wanna show you what's up. So here's the current live chart and I'm gonna go into trade and I'm, uh, I'm gonna use 14 day options is typically where I wanna be. I've got a 15 day option that expires on Feb 6, 16 and then I'm gonna go find my line in the sand at 275, which is right there. All right, so I can see here that if I sold the 275 puts and bought the underlying put at 27, 272.50, there's about 17 cents of credit there. Is that enough? Is 17 cents credit enough on a two and a half point wide spread? And there's math that you can use. This is right out of the guidebook. I'm just gonna check here. There's 7%. So basically, this is, is formulaic. You've got the spread width, and you sub, if you subtract the spread width minus the credit that's available, 17 cents currently, my max risk will be the width of the spread minus the credit. So my max risk, 233, and that gives me a 7% return on investment. I want at least 10%. So Brandon, what that tells me is that that trade's not gonna work for me. I need to lift up my credit spread closer to the heat in order to make a bit more money. I, I want 10% at least. Now I know this is math, I get it. It's probably hard to follow for some of you. And that's why we have that free guide that we'll tell you about here in a minute. So what I'm looking at doing now is maybe lifting it up to 280. So I'm gonna lift my line in the sand up to around 280. I'll go into, into here and I'll just, oh, now we're getting 65 cents. Hold the, hold the phone. Hold the phone, 65 cents, are you serious? I wish I was doing this one, <laughs> this is a good one. All right, so now we can, it looks like we can get 65 cents. That's 35%, yes please, I want that please. Line in the sand all the way at 275. So let's try to get that, it's showing 67 cents. How many contracts can I get if I get 65? If I do two contracts, and my max risk is 185 then per contract, then I'm risking 370. I wanna stay below $500 to keep my risk contained. The average is two to 3% of your total portfolio value. So I'm assuming I have a $25,000 account. This is really important. Don't put too much money into any given trade, trading 101. So I'm gonna do two contracts. I know I'm going fast, but I gotta get this because the the prices uh, move around a lot at the, at the open. 65 cents right there, mm, 67. I'm gonna go back to monitor here and I'll drop it down a little bit. Let's drop it down to 65 cents. Now it's down, let's go to 60 cents. It's now down to 62. So I'm gonna try to get 60 cents. See, it's, see how fast it's moving, Brandon? Now it's at 55. Yeah, I've, I've, I've watched these things every time we do this. And this is just the, the nature of the market right when it opens too. So, I mean, 65, I, I throw that thing at 50 cents and call it a day because 50 cents still gets you what? Like 23% or something like that? What, right now, this is like a really good trade setup. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it in at 50 and, uh, and just let it sit there for a bit. So 
You know, Brandon, the reason that um, we, we like to start the show at 15 minutes before the market is because in the morning after news like this, option traders come in in droves and they want some of that. They want some of those options. And so market makers are taking orders and you can get filled. It's like dropping a hook in the water in a feeding frenzy with fish. You can often just grab, grab fish pretty easily. Um, they bite, they bite much more frequently. So now I'm going to, let's do this. I want this one. I'm not too worried about, let's see if we, what 40 cents will give us here. Okay. Even at 40 cents, there's 19%, which is, which is really good. 10% is my minimum. And so I'll even take 25 cents on this one. I'm not going to get aggressive and go after. Uh, more credit by lifting the, the credit spread higher because I want the probability. All right, that should fill here shortly, Brandon. I'm going to let that marinate for a bit and uh, we'll see how that works out. And uh, while we're waiting, we've got plenty of time here, it looks like. Perhaps we could talk about uh, what do you want to talk about, Brandon? The guide? Oh, no, <laughs> you bring up some good. I was hoping you'd actually bring this up earlier, but yeah, tell us about your guide, why people need it, and where they can get this bad boy. Yeah, the guide, you know, I know I'm, I go fast, credit spreads, uh, calculating uh, return on investment, all those things. And it's, um, at first, it's too much for most to deal with. So I've created this comprehensive guide that will walk you through five steps to identify stock opportunities, check the news, lines in the sand, constructing a credit spread, managing the credit spread. And it's just, it's just a really good way for you to follow along what I do. And the hope that we have is that you'll read the guide, come on Thursdays and start um, practicing with this system. I would recommend that you read, get the guide. It's in a link right below our faces here. Uh, grab it, read it, and join us every Thursday because this is what we do every Thursday, live trading. It's fast paced. And so you need, I think you need some kind of guide to keep yourself oriented and it's free. Yeah. Free is the best number, obviously. And, and we do set this show up in a way that Mike can kind of go through and explain what he's doing and then set this trade up that he has working right now. Um, I did have one question about a stock while we're waiting for that trade to fill. If you want to take a look at it, uh, Tesla, yeah. I know we saw some crazy moves in Tesla last week and uh, I don't know if you heard what happened to Elon Musk over in Delaware uh, over the yeah. last week as well. Pretty crazy situation. Uh, I don't know how that's yeah. all going to play his, out. What was his bonus? 36, 30 some billion 55 or something? Billion. I thought it was $55 oh billion dollars is what I saw reported. And so he, uh, $55 billion. I don't know if you can take a loss of $55 billion in one day because of one judge in one little state, but he does not want people to incorporate in Delaware anymore. So what, what are your thoughts on this stock going forward now? I mean, should we have saw a bump after that news or not? What are you thinking on this one? Well, uh, we didn't get a bump. Uh, the stock, the Tesla came down hard. I, 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 I would imagine, I mean, logically speaking, Brandon, it seems like if uh, <laughs> Tesla's not going to pay Elon $35 billion, that there should be a bounce. And I didn't see one. So I'm, I'm a little bit unsure about where Tesla goes from here. What do you think though? Honestly, you know, I think they're gonna still fight this. I think they're gonna appeal this thing. I think obviously he's gonna fight this because the voters voted for him to have that pay structure in place. He met every single milestone along the way there. I mean, he, I don't know if he deserve, deserves that 55 million, but he did exactly what he said he was gonna do. And that's what the shareholders voted on. And you have that one holdout who owns, from what I heard, nine Tesla shares. And it's like, are you serious? Can we even do that? But it is what it is. And so I think we'll watch Tesla. Tesla, you never count out of the race by any means. Obviously, it's had a, a nice downturn. Tesla's one of those ones, you know, might look to put an entry in, a long entry in here soon, uh, yeah. just depending on where this thing goes and how this next little thing plays out. I think that if they can solve this issue, kind of move on and then get their get their profits, get some better earnings outlooks. I think Tesla might be one of those things that might be a little bit more tradable, but right now I'm not going to touch it. We'll just see where this yeah. thing heads, Mike. But, I tell you what, Brandon, what uh, I would do with this one, I, I think it'll probably channel between 200, which is resistance now, 
And look what it did at 180. You see that? The low of the day is almost yeah. exactly at 180. I'm telling you, round numbers, increments of five and 10 and even 20 are often really good support resistance levels. So what I would do on Tesla is I would let, I think it's gonna go sideways for a bit, uh, channeling between 180 and 200. But if it breaks above 200, starts to fill this gap, then I, that's, that's when I would consider going bullish on Tesla myself. Okay. I like that read. I think that's a good read there, Mike. Okay. Well, thank uh, thank did you. I hear, did your trade fill? I thought I heard. It the did, yeah. Oh, so look. Bum, 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 I, had bum. To, I had to bite my tongue because I wanted to go see. We got 70 cents. What? Wow. What? No what? way. What is that's that? What can happen, you know, it's like, Feeding frenzy. I want. I want some align options. Give me some options. You know, it's like a. Um, there's so much. Uh, or so many orders. So much volume, that you just put a. I know. That, I know. I. I have lines in the sand, and now I say lines in the water. Put a fish hook in the water at a price, and just see what happens. We saw the price go from 65 to 70, down to 45, down to 50, all over the map. Just set it and 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 breathe, which is hard for me to do. And we actually got filled at 70 cents there. So let me show you that, show everybody that order, Brandon, so they can try to, to replicate. So we just got 70 cents on this bad boy. All right. And now, be, now this is the exciting part, because if we get 70, we got 70 cents, then that's a 39% return on investment in 15 days, potential. We'll buy that back for 10% of the original credit, 7 cents. And we'll net somewhere in the neighborhood of 30% on the uh, 33%, 36% or so, 30, whatever, you know what I mean? Less than 39, about 36% um, in less than two weeks. So that's this world. And you know what happened to Humana last week was it was so volatile, we got a good fill in the morning, and then an hour later, we took it off. That's, that's a distinct possibility on this one. That's I love this. Crazy. Well, okay. Hey, uh -huh. Congratulations on that one. Uh, I think that's going to be a really good trade, and you put that on really well. So let's talk about this right before we wrap up because we have like two more minutes here, Mike. Um, earnings. Are you looking at any more earnings over the next couple of days? Just if you just wanted to mention just something that you're looking at right here. Yeah, um, there's three stocks that announced today. There's a graphic that we have here. I got this from Earnings Whispers. It's free. EarningsWhispers.com. You can you get a, get on their email list, and they'll send you this this chart. And you can see that Apple Meta. I don't have the chart in front of me. What's the other one? Apple Meta. Apple Meta and Amazon is what the Amazon, last one. Amazon. Yeah, I can't believe but, I forgot that one. So those three announced after the bell, and those those are if if either any one of those surprises to the good side or the downside, you're going to see some movement. And so I would say, put those on your radar, get the guide down below, put those on your radar and be ready tomorrow morning around nine o'clock Eastern and, and start to uh, go through this process, practice. You'll have the video of this call later this morning. You can watch the video and get yourselves ready to snipe some profits on those three massive tech stocks that announce right after the bell today. So yeah, be ready on that one. I am. All right. <laughs> I know you are. Well, I'm excited, Mike. This has been an awesome show, and I'm really excited about, oh my gosh, that last trade, 30 plus percent. It looks like we're setting up for another 30 plus percent. I cannot wait to see what happens when we get back together next week and talk about these trades, Mike. Your trading style, I, I tell these guys, I tell everybody, this is one of my favorite trading styles. I love the fast profit, you know, the high probability trading because we are using what's happening in the market. So it's not even like, I mean, risk is involved, but it just doesn't seem like that high of risk. So I just love what we're doing here. Um, Mike, thank you for coming by the show today. And thank you all for dropping by. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Get Mike's Sniper uh, book. You need to get that thing. It's absolutely free. We're going to put the link down here so you guys can click on that and just get that book right now. Uh, Mike's Sniper system. He knows what he's talking about. He explains everything that we're going through each and every day. Uh, but as for now, we will see you next week here back on the channel. We'll see ya.